the Dutch light cruiser, the Deruder and her companions engage a Japanese force in the Java Sea, unknowingly, this was her last battle, what follows was an intense yet one-sided battle which resulted in the destruction of most capable Dutch surface vessels and the effective end of the Abde float. This was the same navy that terrorizes the seas when their navy partakes in battles, several times they've defeated the British with their mighty fleet, how have they come to such a decline from a one superpower navy? Well, to start we'd have to go back more than a century before the Battle of Java Sea, to be exact the immediate aftermath of the disastrous Fourth Anglo-Dutch War, the Dutch Navy suffered numerous defeats in the mentioned war its navy was severely weakened and paved the way for British naval dominance in the Far East, after the humiliating defeat the Dutch Navy was relegated to a regional naval power and temporarily ceased to exist after the Netherlands was integrated to the French Empire. After it regained its independence, the Dutch Navy saw an increase in servicemen due to an ever-increasing demand of a sufficient navy and the lack of Dutch manpower forced them to start recruiting natives from their colonies, however the growing pacifist movement made the Dutch government at the time non-interventionist, the armed forces suffers a decrease in budget and the navy was no different, desires to rebuild its navy to its powerful past dies down as wars was of little interest to the Dutch government and people, to solidify their distaste towards wars, much of post-Napoleon Netherlands saw peace across Europe, further lessening the need of a grand fleet, relations with Great Britain was great and it was hoped that the defense of the East Indies would be helped mostly or entirely by the British Navy, combined with the quite late heavy industrialization in the Netherlands that took place in the 1880s to the 1890s the Dutch Navy importance gradually declined in significance and importance. However the immense revenues and profits of their jewel of the empire, the Dutch East Indies was to be realized by the beginning of the 20th century, because of this their economy skyrocketed and became one of the richest countries in Europe, with this it is clear that anyone who controls the Dutch East Indies controls the immense revenue it generates and the defense of the East Indies was slowly realized to be one of the most important tasks of the Dutch armed forces. In the 1890s, the Dutch government imposed their views that a small fleet of armored cruisers and ships would be sufficient enough to deter an invasion until Britain comes to their aid, a small fleet in being with a small budget in practical sense. Thus several armored cruisers and protected cruisers was built for the East Indies, these ships were of the Evertsen class Panzerschip, Holland class protected cruisers, and the Tromp class Panzerschips. The idea of Britain eventually protecting the East Indies came to an end once the Second Boer War started, relations between Britain and the Netherlands soured, the policy of the protection of the East Indies now solely rely on Dutch forces alone, which forced the Dutch to change their policy, this combined with the ever more increasing Japanese naval power in Asian waters with the fact that they have just defeated the Russian fleet in Port Arthur made Dutch authorities doubt the safety of the East Indies, with other colonial powers missing a sufficient fleet to protect their Asian colonies, such as Germany's and France, the Dutch were entirely alone on the protection of the East Indies against a Japanese attack, a task it was never intended nor able to perform. In 1906 the Dutch formed a commission to revise their plans on the defense of the East Indies, Initially they went with the jean Nicole approach, a strategy which is to counter enemy battleships and cruisers with smaller torpedo armed ships, this in turn led to the approval of the construction of eight fret class destroyers, completed between 1910 and 1913, newer designs for their Panzerskerpen were also being made. However the commissioning of the HMS Dreadnought in 1906 brought a new generation of naval vessels, by 1912 it was obviously clear that the barely 8,000 tons Panzerschip which is being planned would be outgunned and outmatched by the 30,000 tons Japanese Kongu and Fuzu class dreadnoughts, this lead to Hendrikus Kolagen, the Minister of the Navy in the following year, proposing several dreadnought battleships to be constructed. 
The planned construction was supported by many Dutch officials and several shipbuilding companies submitted proposals and designs to build several dreadnoughts for the Dutch Navy, it seemed as if the Dutch might finally be able to at least meet head to head with the Japanese Navy, that is until World War I broke out, shipbuilding companies such as German IR Feet and Vickers refused to build any ships for a non-belligerent and in that unsatisfying conclusion, it cancelled any Dutch dreadnought ambitions. Vice Admiral Rambonet however, which succeeded Hendrikus Kolijn as the Minister of the Navy was undeterred, he proposed a fleet of five battleships, five cruisers, and a dozen submarines to serve as the larger East Indies fleet right before World War I broke out, since foreign shipyards are unable to build their desired battleships the Dutch look towards their own, their own shipyards, thankfully, could build cruisers and submarines due to experience and quality of their shipyards, three Java class, cruisers was built however the last one, Celebs was cancelled due to several problems, the aging Fred class destroyers was supplemented with the more modern, Admiral class destroyers, the submarines of the Dutch Navy also partake in a series of modernizations and replacements. Vice Admiral Rambonet came up with the naval strategy for the East Indies fleet, while their cruisers was capable of commerce raiding, Rambonet strictly imposed them to scouting role. Dutch cruisers was to scout and lure an enemy task force to a Dutch battle fleet, with the absence of any capital ships a Dutch battle fleet had to be replaced with an interesting vessel, Rambonet revised his strategy to make their cruisers lure an enemy task force to a concentrated submarine torpedo barrage as a stopgap for the proposed Dutch battle fleet, the naval strategy was set, However Rambonet still continued to urge for a Dutch Navy to acquire battleships or battle cruisers as their main battle fleet after foreign shipyards reopens. The three Java class was almost entirely cancelled due to financial problems caused by the First World War and lack of material which was supposed to be provided by German companies which could not even keep up with their own national demands, the Java and Sumatra was spared of being outright scrapped due to the cost of cancelling them was almost the same as completing them, Sumatra was launched and christened by Queen Wilhelmina on the 29th of December 1920 and Java follows her on the 9th of August the following year, despite already being launched, the twin cruisers have massive difficulties in gaining their armaments, they originally planned to have Crook provide them with 20 15 cm Crook guns, 10 for each ship, they were only able to purchase 8 from a Crook warehouse, the remaining 12 was to be purchased from the Swedish manufacturer, Bofors, not only problems with acquiring armaments the Dutch found themselves in. They had considerably terrible luck in acquiring machineries for the twin cruisers after a fire broke out and destroying several components for Sumatra causing even more delays, the twin cruisers fire control systems was not spared from difficulties, the Dutch had intended to purchase German fire control systems which has proved its effectiveness in World War I, but due to the Treaty of Versailles they couldn't manufacture them, the Dutch then turned towards a newly formed Dutch branch of a German company, Hazemeyer Signalapparaten Fabrik for their electronic components, finally in 1925 Java was commissioned and Sumatra in 1926, after a decade the twin cruisers finally serves in the East Indies, at the time in 1915, these were to be the most advanced, modern, and heavily armed cruisers in the world. By 1926 the Java class was already outclassed by the Japanese heavy cruisers of Purutaka, Aoba, and Myoko classes. The new Admiral class destroyers also went into many problems and difficulties like the Java class, however instead of technical issues it was political and strategical issues, it was predicted that 24 destroyers was needed for two naval groups to support submarines and cruisers, despite not including battleships, a 24 destroyer fleet nearly needs double the budget of the Dutch Navy, it was quickly rejected and an improvised 12 destroyers fleet was rejected quickly too, the Dutch was in a week state financially at this time in 1923, 
and the promised peace ensured by the League of Nations draws little interest to conduct a naval expansion, in 1925 the Dutch Navy was finally given permission to construct four new destroyers, much larger and heavier than the Fret class, they turned towards British prototype destroyer, HMS Ambuscade as their reference, with that, the Admiral class destroyers was designed and shortly after, built in Rotterdam by the end of 1925. With the Dutch state becoming increasingly weaker in financial terms, many budget cuts was given to their armed forces, this prompted in a rivalry between the KNIL, the armed forces in the East Indies, and the Dutch Navy to gain access to the tighter budget, the rivalry went so bad that the government started to reassess both parties' responsibilities, the government urged the KNIL and the Dutch Navy to accept and realize the reasonings between their tighter budget, as the Dutch financial situation slowly improves. The Dutch Navy was given permission to build four more Admiral N class destroyers in a span of two years in 1927. By 1927, the Dutch was slowly improving their financial state. Minister of Defense Laurentius Deckers proposed a new fleet plan that he thought would be sufficient to repel a Japanese attack, a force consisting of three cruisers, 12 destroyers, and 18 submarines. The plan was named as Fleet Plan Deckers, the Dutch needed to construct one more cruiser, four destroyers, and six submarines. The Dutch Navy prioritized the construction of the single cruiser despite the cost, this in turn led to massive backlash from various groups, some naval officers hoped to be able to acquire more submarines, KNIL argued that the budget should be allocated to the Dutch Air Force in the East Indies, pacifists and leftists movements strongly opposed the construction of the third cruiser, the Dutch Navy intended for the third cruiser to be fitted with six 20cm guns and deck mounted torpedoes with a displacement of roughly 9000 tons. The estimated cost of the third cruiser was deemed to be way too expensive, and would most likely add another reason not to construct the third cruiser, Deckers proposed a smaller cruiser, fitted with six 15cm guns with no torpedo armaments and a displacement of 5,250 tons, the effects of the Great Depression had reached the Netherlands by the time the third cruiser was being determined. This resulted in the third cruiser to be plagued with budget compromises such as a relatively weak armor and armament. Deckers was able to make a compromise to make the third cruiser a flotilla leader instead of classifying it as a light cruiser and was able to add an additional gun. Her final design assisted by the German firm IVS made it quite obvious that the third cruiser had influences from the German pocket battleship Graf Spee and Scheer. The third cruiser was given the name De Ruyter and was laid down in September 1933 and commissioned in 1936. The last part of the fleet plan Deckers to receive any kind of funding was the destroyers. Its eight Admiral N class destroyers were rendered inadequate to combat the first modern destroyer of the Japanese Navy, the Fubuki class. A new design and class of destroyers was made, the Gerard Kallenberg class destroyers. She was to be able to engage Japan's modern destroyers and perform lethal torpedo attacks against ships larger in size, it was designed and armed to be superior than the British tribal class destroyer with her 5 12 cm guns and 8 torpedo tubes, 4 was planned as intended but due to the German invasion of the Netherlands, 2 had to be intentionally destroyed to prevent German capture. A single ship was able to escape to Great Britain while one was captured by German forces and served in the Kriegsmarine. Two torpedo cruisers slash destroyer leaders of the Tromp class were also built despite not being part of the fleet plan Deckers, one was serving in the East Indies by the time Germany invaded. The second was rushed into commission and escaped to Britain where she would get her armaments from British firms. By the end of the 1930s, the Dutch Navy had completed most of the fleet plan Deckers, their Rambonet strategy devised as far back to the outbreak of World War I can now be conducted effectively, a force of five cruisers, 12 destroyers, and 18 submarines, was to be split into two different groups, 
each group would conduct the Rambonet strategy in their specified regions, the first group would be assigned in the Karimata Strait, the second would be assigned in the Makassar Strait, their main purpose, however was still universal, their goal is to protect the center of the East Indies, the island of Java, Java holds most of the administration of the colony and also holds many bases for both KNIL and Dutch Navy. By 1939 Rear Admiral John First Nair solidified this task group and Rambonet submarine tactic, however he still was a strong advocate for Rambonet's earlier battle fleet in the 1910s, few years before, he was impressed with the German Scharnhorst class battleships and advocated for the Dutch to acquire a ship of similar design as the Scharnhorst, the Scharnhorsts alongside the pocket battleships was at first designed to raid commerce thus forcing their enemies to allocate larger ships to protect their commerce, weakening and overstretching their combat strength. John First Nair despite developing the submarine tactic of Rambonet, advocated for a new strategy similar to the Scharnhorst and Panzerskoffs. First Nair believed that a small fleet of battle cruisers would serve as another instrument for a fleet in being while also conducting similar commerce raiding against Japanese supply convoys which he hoped makes a naval invasion of the East Indies difficult and combined with British and American support it would only make it even harder. This new plan was deemed risky and aggressive, however First Nair had the support of many of the Dutch Navy staff including Vice Admiral Conrad Helfrich, despite the cost of the battle cruisers to be quite expensive, the situation in Europe was great for naval expansion, rising world tensions and German rearmament made it clear that a war was about to happen, IVS submitted drafts of a 26,000 tons battle cruiser armed with similar 28 cm guns of the Scharnhorst class, the dreams of a Dutch capital ship came to an end similar to what had happened a quarter of a century before, a war started, this time it was in their own soil. The battle cruiser plan was cancelled and the Dutch naval staff moved to exile in Britain. On several meetings between what would become the Abde Float, John First Nair had always advocated his idea of a large fleet as a fleet in being that could conduct convoy raiding on Japanese supply convoys, weakening the strength of the Japanese army. His idea might have further solidified Churchill's decision to send the Prince of Wales and Repulse to Singapore as the basis of a fleet in being, First Netter and Helfrich doesn't mind being under British strategic command as their strategy in some sort. Similar to First Nair's aggressive convoy raiding, Helfrich which by 1941 became the naval commander of the East Indies agreed to hand over most of their vessels to serve with the British fleet, including three cruisers and six destroyers. As Japan attacked Hong Kong and Pearl Harbor, the Dutch government in exile declared war to the Empire of Japan despite Japan haven't prepared a declaration of war to the Dutch government, the first Dutch vessels to see action was their submarines, which by the time consists of 12 submarines with three in reserve, initially the Dutch was immensely successful, sinking the Tasan Maru, Aso San Maru, Sakura Maru, and Ayata Maru in a single day, four more Japanese ships was sunk soon after. The Japanese destroyer, Sajiri was sunk on the eve of Christmas 1941 by K-16 but she too was sunk by the Japanese submarine I-66, despite a successful submarine campaign. By the beginning of 1942 the Dutch Navy lost a quarter of their submarine fleet with several almost too heavily damaged to be repaired, they had still not slowed down Japanese advance, Helfrich instructed his submarines to be less aggressive and formed a new submarine division with two submarines. As Singapore was deemed impossible to be protected from a Japanese land attack, the of the float restationed at Surabaya with what they have left. With this Helfrich essentially hold control of the Abde float fleet that was able to limp back to friendly territory, Helfrich ordered his remaining submarines to revert to Rambonet's strategy earlier devised but it was too late, they have lost too many submarines and the supposed cruisers and destroyers intended to assist them was unavailable, the remaining ship stationed in Surabaya was merged into a single ragtag multinational fleet nicknamed, ABDA Strike Force, 
the fleet was commanded by Commander Carol Dorman who made the Ruder as the fleet's flagship, until now most of the surface vessels was tasked with convoy protection, but due to the fall of Singapore, their priorities shifted to halting any incoming Japanese attack. On the 3rd of February the task force was attacked by Japanese bombers and planes, while none of their ships was sunk. Houston and Marblehead was damaged and forced to repair soon after, despite losing the heavy cruiser Houston temporarily, this was supplemented with the addition of HMS Exeter and several light cruisers to Carol Dorman's fleet in the 14th of February. Carol Dorman set sail the following day to intercept a Japanese invasion force on Sumatra, Dutch destroyer Van Ghent ran the ground and was forced to be scuttled and her sister ship Van Ness was sunk by Japanese aircraft. Sumatra have effectively fallen to Japanese hands by now and Japan started focusing on the invasion of Java. Carol Dorman's fleet attempted to fend off an invasion force towards Bali in the 19th of February at the Battle of Badung Strait, which subsequently failed and reduced their fighting force as Pete Hine was lost. Trump was too heavily damaged to continue fighting and fled to Australia to commence repairs. American destroyer Stewart was scuttled later as it's deemed unreasonable to repair her. After receiving reports of a Japanese task force steaming towards Java, Helfrich ordered Carol Dorman to stop them immediately. Carol Dorman and Helfrich had just finished regrouping several of his vessels to two separate striking force, both have the combined name as the combined striking force, the combined striking force was the strongest fleet Carol Dorman ever commanded, he moved both of his strike force to Surabaya expecting an invasion force from the Makassar Strait, on the 27th of February a Dutch reconnaissance plane spotted a Japanese fleet in the Java Sea. Doorman didn't hesitate to send everything he had, on 4 p.m. the evening, both forces engaged. Doorman faced a Japanese force of two heavy cruisers, two light cruisers, and 14 destroyers escorting the invasion force headed towards Java. The battle began as a long-range duel and later turned towards a torpedo attack by each side, the first of torpedo barrages conducted by the Japanese. Cortenator was hit and subsequently sunk. An hour and a half later Doorman broke off and attempted to flank the Japanese fleet for several hours until 11.15 pm they were forced to another long-range duel. The two Japanese heavy cruisers launched another torpedo barrage. Torpedoes from the Japanese struck Java and detonating her magazine. The Ruder, Carol Doorman's flagship was hit by a torpedo. The Ruder's internal machineries failed to work as their ship's power was knocked out. Minutes later, Carol Doorman gave the order to abandon ship. Instead of escaping he chose to go down with the Ruder. The Battle of Java Sea marked the end of Abdicom and of the float. It ensured Japanese naval dominance until the end of the war. The rest of Carol Doorman's fleet scattered to safety. Houston and Perth accompanied by Evertsen was unlucky enough to stumble upon another Japanese invasion force and all of them was subsequently sunk. Every remaining British and American vessels was ordered to break off and head to the nearest naval base. Conrad Helfrich had hoped to form one last task force to hold off a Japanese attack, but seeing the situation he ordered all unserviceable vessels to be scuttled. Bankert and with the with after being damaged due to an air raid by the Japanese was scuttled there. Several submarines had to be scuttled as well while the rest of the submarine fleet fled to Australia and Ceylon. The losses the Dutch Navy sustained for the defense of the East Indies ended their right to fight as an independent force. Remaining vessels was mostly integrated to Britain to fight alongside British and American ships. The earlier heavy submarine losses sustained by the Dutch Navy was due to John First Ness and Helfrich's new and aggressive strategy. The Dutch crews and servicemen was untrained on the newly implemented strategy and this had to coincide with the outbreak of the war lead them to having little to no experience conducting such aggressive tactics with a relatively light navy. Even if Dutch battle cruisers was built, 
it is likely that they would suffer the same fate as Prince of Wales and Repulse. Japanese air power was unmatched at the time, if first Natter stayed with the Rambonet submarine strategy, the East Indies might as well last longer, however defeat was inevitable. The results of the disastrous naval campaign to protect the East Indies was due to the lack of proper naval expansion early in the 20th century due to being fooled to think that peace in Europe was secure, once they had realized Japan was about to strike, they turned towards their British and American allies to cooperate together in the defense of their colonies, they were well aware that their East Indies squadron could not face the naval might of Japan alone, their ships are plagued with littering evidence of tight budget and a naive mindset of peace. These ships' performance however could not be attributed to Dutch shipyards and must not undermine the immense bravery and courage Dutch sailors and officers shown, in a one-sided, desperate, doomed struggle to the defense of the East Indies. Their ships are a reflection of the financial struggle of a tiny European nation holding upon massive colonial empire, placed in a rough period of Dutch history in which they witnessed the world descend into chaos twice in a century.